Deep divers. In April, the CDC put out a report stating that in 2019, for the sixth year in a row, STD reports were at an all-time high. An estimated one in five people has an STD. What is going on? I think there is some sense people think of STD as kind of a rite of passage. You know, in some groups, some people think, oh, it's no big deal, it's not serious. It's just what happens to you if you're out there getting busy and so that you just sort of take it as part of the landscape. But you know, not all STIs are treatable. I mean, we can't cure all of them. The bacterial ones we can, but the viral infections we cannot. So it could be a, a lifetime uh, situation you find yourself in if you're casual about it. We've seen everything from like the COVID epidemic. We see the results of what happens to you when you're poor and you don't have health insurance and you don't have a, a primary care provider. And so you're oftentimes not able to get the kind of health care services you need. Then, of course, there's always shame and stigma attached to STDs in, in our country. And so people are reluctant to actually go in for care. People have changed their behavior and, and maybe not always using condoms, then you are going to continue to see rising numbers of STIs in our country. What do you think is the biggest misconception when it comes to STDs and STIs? The most troublesome misconception is that somehow you can tell by looking. You know, we always think there's gonna be something obvious it's either going to be a sore or there's going to be an odor. There's going to be something that the person has that I can tell. But the thing that we have to remember is that you cannot tell by looking. There's still a lot we don't know about STDs or STIs and a lot of things we get wrong. Some people still think you can catch an STD by sitting on a toilet seat. What toilet seat are you sitting on? Let's break down some myths. Once you've been treated for one STD, you're immune to that STD forever. I wish it were so. If you get an HPV vaccine, that will protect you from contracting HPV. But the other STDs don't have a vaccine, and so there is no permanent cure. You can get gonorrhea or syphilis or chlamydia as many times as you expose yourself to the infection. If two people with HIV have unprotected sex with each other, they create a super strain of HIV. No, there's no sort of magic like one plus one equals two and oh my God, it's gonna sort of exponentially get worse. If you get checked for an STD and you're STD free, your partner then does not have to get checked as well. Uh, no, please, your partner needs to get checked as well. I would advise anybody beginning a new relationship to have the very candid conversation about their behaviors, what they've engaged in, and also to consider both getting themselves tested and again, treated if anything is going on. Women who identify as lesbians cannot catch most STDs. Another false myth, lesbian sex involves very intimate acts. And so there is a genitalia sort of sharing of that space. The oral sex occurs. And so again, when you think sex, you have to think that those things can put you at risk. Gay men who receive are more likely to catch an STD than their delivering counterparts. False myth. Again, top partner is at less risk than the bottom partner. No, it's not like that. According to the CDC, gay men made up nearly half of all primary and secondary syphilis cases in 2019. But what about those who don't identify as gay or straight? male or female, do the rules still apply? It doesn't matter what your classification. If you are engaged in a sexual activity, if you're intimate with another person without a barrier protection like a condom, then you can be at risk for an STI. So I, I really think people have to move away from thinking about who I am to thinking about what am I doing. Disparities among the races exist as well. The numbers show that Black and African Americans are five to eight times more likely to contract an STD as compared to their white counterparts. If you are a person of color in this country, you often have economic disadvantage. And so without adequate access to primary health care, 
You may not have health insurance, or you may have a job that doesn't give you any time off to go to the doctor. And so there are all these factors that are impeding your ability to get the kind of health care you need. And then you also do have, you know, lack of information, communication about what's going on. And so we work really hard at the CDC to get information out to populations that's culturally centered so that it makes sense to people to understand what we're talking about. COVID-19 brought a spotlight to major disparities in all parts of our lives, and the effects COVID will have on STD and STI rates going forward is still to be determined. But a recent CDC report saw that from March to April of 2020, reported STDs dramatically decreased, but a resurgence of gonorrhea and syphilis cases later that same year suggests that overall STDs may have actually increased during 2020. I think probably people did get together and what I worry is that many people haven't had the access to the services that they need and I worry that there might be even more transmission going on that we didn't interrupt because we didn't have the resources to do that. Only you can prevent an STD or STI, not to sound like an after school special. Jill Valentine says all you need to do is use your voice and know that you have the power. When you decide to be intimate with someone, you have to be intentional about that and think about how do I want to do that safely so that I'm safe and my partner is safe. So I think what's really, really important is that people do have power. They do have agency over their own bodies. And that, that is the thing we want people to go away understanding. You can make a different choice to protect your health and the health of your partner. I'm Bukia Lake Bidet, and I'll see you guys next time. Wrap it up! and stay safe, deep divers.